Hey, hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here and welcome back to another Hyperscape video. Now in today's video, I thought we'd just go through all of the hacks and all of the weapons currently available in Hyperscape, talk about what I currently think are some of the best hacks and the best weapons, just generally show them off for you guys, and teach you some little tips and tricks that you can use with uh, some of the hacks and some of the weapons in the game to make yourself a better player. Now maybe you haven't actually had a chance to see Hyperscape before, or maybe you've only seen bits of it on the stream, but you haven't had a chance to play it yet, you haven't got the uh, Twitch drop, or maybe you're waiting for it to come to console, uh, in which case we'll actually just go through and like show you everything as well as give you the the secrets and the tips and tricks to using those uh, hacks and weapons optimally so we'll start off with the hacks on the left over here however if you are interested in a specific part of this video uh, like what is the best stuff baggins what does this weapon do etc etc I'll put links in the description down below to like time codes so at this part of the video this happens this part of the video um, but yeah like I say we'll start off with hacks uh, we'll go through all of them, and then I'll talk about which ones I think are the best. Actually, no. In fact, we're going to talk about what I think is the best stuff first, because that's probably what a few people are interested in. Then we'll break down individual tips and tricks that you can do with some things in the game. So starting off, what do I think are currently the best hacks? Well, based on my uh, playtime experience, and at this point, I do want to mention... Probably what I'm talking about right now, a couple of weeks after this video comes out, will be like redundant. Most likely they'll have uh, done a few patches and a few updates and the strategies that are currently OP right now will have been uh, tweaked or fixed. And if that is the case, I'll put a, a link in the comments down below to an updated video uh, where we talk about what is currently strong at that point in time. But right now, uh, we're talking about the launch of the technical test. Actually, this is bef even before the 2nd of July. We're on the 30th of June right now. And uh, the strongest hacks that I currently think are in the game right now synergize with the skybreaker weapons so uh, we got to talk about what I think are the best weapons in order to talk about what are the best hacks and I think the skybreaker is uh, definitely one of the stronger ones out there right now it's relatively easy to land shots with it in fact let's just go over and pick it up real quick because it'll help explain why these hacks are so strong so here we are the skybreaker it's like a uh, rocket launcher cannon sort of thing so you can jump up in the air shoot out a blast and it Interesting thing about the Skybreaker, the further the uh, distance of the shot of this weapon, the more damage it does. So if you're right next to somebody and you hit them point blank, it's only 15 damage. However, if we go uh, a little bit of a distance, or let's say we pick up a teleport, or maybe a slam, and then we actually blink up into the air like this. There we go, 50 damage, so from 15 up to 50. And notice I didn't even have to hit him directly there. In fact, even if I just hit him with the edge of the rocket, it still does a tremendous amount of damage. So we go back up again. And let's try and like deliberately aim badly. Still 50 damage. Like I think we, there's a chance that we may have actually done less damage if we hit him directly because it, you know, it's a further distance away from him. So the fact that you can just like roughly shoot in the direction of the enemy and still do 50 damage, so half of somebody's health pool uh, with a level one skybreaker is pretty nuts. And of course, distance being the key to make the skybreaker work. Uh, that's why I currently think teleport on uh, slam as two of the strongest hacks in the game right now because they give you great movement just in general you know really really good for moving around the map but they also enable the skybreaker to do some absolutely nuts damage especially when you combine the two together you teleport up in the air then as you're coming down you leap up in the air then you right click to aim with the weapon then you can jump again while you're in the air as well with, with the double jump mechanic you can really get a lot of air time and as a result make this uh, skybreaker weapon pretty powerful now, if we're talking about non-weapon specific, um, there is another strat that you can run when you get the crown in the late game, uh, when it becomes crown rush, if you can sort of, you know, make it to the late game using uh, any of these combination of hacks or using the, the cheese strat with the skybreaker and the teleport slam. Once you make it to the late game, you can transition over to ball and armor. And uh, using these two abilities in conjunction, let's say we have a max level because it is late game, so we'll just max out both of these here. So you have the crown and you've just got to try and stay alive for 45 seconds. Well, two of the best ways to stay alive right now is to pop armor. For this whole duration of the armor ability, you can't actually take any damage. Like, you're basically invulnerable. You're just like a walking ice block. You can still jump around and slide while you're in it. And then whilst that's on cooldown, go into the ball. Um, you can be shot out of the ball, so unlike armor, there is actually a way to break it. However, it does seal to take quite a bit of damage, and then, uh, you know, when they do break you out of the ball, you can just pop armor again, and <laughs> then when the armor comes off, the ball is going to be off cooldown very shortly as well. Um, yep, see, armor's off, ball. There we go, back into the ball now. 
And uh, provided, you know, you're not just standing in one spot. If you do move around and break line of sight every now and again, they break out of it and then back into the armor again. So it's actually like almost impossible to kill somebody who's got some semi-decent movement, maybe some teammates protecting them while they're running the armor and the ball. It's a really, really obnoxious combo, and hopefully it's going to get nerfed soon. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that even by the time this video comes out, this might not be a viable strategy. But I've got a feeling that we're not going to see a patch for at least like the first week or two of Hyperscape coming out. In which case, yeah, ball and armor. Very strong combo if you're running around with the crown. Now going into the rest of the abilities, in no particular order, we still have heal left to go over. So there's actually a pretty interesting strat you can run with the heal where if you pop it down, uh, like so, and then you swap it out to another ability. Let's go back to the ball. The heal still stays on the ground, so you can actually, you know, while you're running through a building and looting, you can pick up a heal and then pop it down on the ground and then switch back to your other ability just to heal up. So uh, it's the same with the mine as well. You can actually do it with this one here. If I pop the mine down, there we go, while I'm running through a building and then go back to heal. The mine's still active. And, you know, you can still, like, trap up a building with it. So, always worth, in a pinch, if you need to, while running through a building, just put a mine down. I think they stay active for quite a while. And, you know, put a heal down if you need to. Pretty nice little uh, tip there that you can employ with a couple of the abilities in the game. Heal and mine are actually two abilities as well that change uh, at legendary value. So, there are a few abilities in the game that, like... When you get to the max level, they get extra bonuses. So you'll see if I get a teleport here and then I fuse it with another teleport, just the cooldown's a little bit faster, cooldown's a bit faster, cooldown's a bit faster. So that's it, you know. The same with the ball as well, I believe. If I pick up the ball, cooldown, cooldown, cooldown. However, with the heal, like we were talking about earlier, if I just go and toss this out the way so we don't get too much clutter, if you pick up the heal, uh, you'll notice cooldown, cooldown cooldown and then at max level we get cooldown and increased healing as well now it doesn't actually tell you how much the healing is um, I do know that at legendary it's pretty substantial and because of the cooldown as well you can actually uh, have one down and after a short amount of time you can have another one down as well I think this is the case even like at the, the first rarity that you can still continuously have a heal down all the time so even as one uh, you know is still down you can put down another one you can only have one down at a time um, but yeah, just a, a little secret with the increased healing that you may not know um, once you get it to the level 4 fuse, it does get a bonus in the amount that it heals. Um, I think the only things that get a bonus as well is the uh, the mine. I don't believe any other things get an actual bonus uh, other than just increased cooldown speed at every level. But with the mine, uh, I think it's 50 damage for every level. So I'll fuse it up to 3 here. And you can see we get damage uh, cooldown. So yeah, still 50 damage at level three. But if we get it to uh, the max level, level four, uh, as well as being uh, increased cooldown, we also get bonus damage on it as well. And I think it goes up to 75 if I'm not mistaken. So pretty nice little uh, secret there with the mine. 75 damage is honestly not bad at all. That's very similar to a maxed out sniper or a maxed out skybreaker, which, spoilers, is, you know, two of the best weapons. We're going to get to that in a little bit, but they, those are currently some of the best weapons in the game because of the sheer amount of damage they can put out in one chunk. Same with the mine as well. Um, however, I just find it is a little bit situational, and obviously it can be counted by the armor and the ball, which we've already discussed how strong those are. You can also just, like, put some distance between them with these two abilities as well. So mine can be pretty pretty good for uh, surprising your opponents if you, you know, trap up a building with one. Maybe you have some walls to go with it as well. But again, I think the walls every level is just cooldown speed. Uh, but there is a little secret with the wall. Uh, we're going to need to go pick up a movement ability to fully show off this secret. But um, the wall, for those of you who don't know, is just, it's a wall. You summon it. Um, I think you can have up to five at a time, unless they change it. You can have five walls up at a time. It has 250 health by default. So that's uh, 150, 200, 250 until it breaks. But the, with the wall, as I alluded to earlier, if you pick up a movement ability, while you're in the air, if you look at your feet, you can actually summon a wall sort of mid-air. So if you're doing it on the ground, you're just going to summon a wall out of the ground like so. But if we blink up into the air, and then we look at the ground, you actually summon a wall at your feet. Rather than at the ground ground, you actually summon the wall at your feet. So this could be a pretty uh, handy strategy for doing a little bit of parkour if you need to uh, stay alive. There is a ceiling limit, at least in the training area, to where you can place the wall. It, you know, it only goes this high. However, on the actual full map, it does seem like you can go ridiculously high into the sky uh, before anything actually gets cut off. Um, but like I say, you can have five walls at a time. You can actually stack one wall on top of another. So if we just go down here... 
do a wall and then we can summon another wall and then we could summon another wall and you guys get the idea so you can keep going up however you don't need to the wall doesn't care about gravity as uh, that one up there shows so if i destroy this one here that one still stays in place so a uh, little secret though yeah looking at your feet and summoning the wall uh, not immediately obvious i think there is a tool tip for it while you're loading into the game um, but just so you guys are aware, that's like a secret that you can employ with a wall if you find yourself using that in a game. Other abilities that we haven't taken a look at yet, we do have invisibility. So invisibility pretty much does what it says in the tin, you become invisible. Um, it is a pretty useful ability, especially in conjunction with one of these movement abilities. You can uh, sort of blink up into the air, and then when your opponent like flicks over to try and track you, if you pop invisibility, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to figure out where you went after that. However, if you do just go invisible right next to an enemy, it is possible to tell where they're moving because of the uh, noise that the invisibility makes so it does muffle your footsteps but you still have this sort of like a uh, white noise that's playing with the invisibility and a, you know a player with a good headset a player with good ears will still be able to follow where somebody went to an invisibility if they just cloaked right next to them however like I say teleporting up into the air and then going invisible that's gonna be a lot harder to track so invisibility definitely not a bad weapon uh, especially in conjunction with something like the sniper rifle allowing you to uh, line up a nice headshot while your opponent doesn't know where you are. Um, but I still don't think it compares, you know, to the uh, movement abilities uh, in conjunction with the Skybreaker and the other stuff there. Uh, one of my least favorite abilities in the game right now, and maybe it's just because I don't really know how to use it very well, but it's uh, the reveal here. So reveal, like with invisibility at every rank, uh, it just goes up in cooldown speed, so there's no extra bonus from getting it to max. Uh, but what you can do is uh, even through walls, let's actually, let's grab ourselves a wall, shall we? Because then we can show it off better. Even through walls, you can fire out the reveal. <laughs> And it will show you and your teammates where the enemies are with these little uh, red indicators here. I want to say for about five seconds. Um, but honestly, it just doesn't really feel like it's very powerful. Like on its own, it would be cool. But compared to all these other hacks, it just doesn't feel that useful. Especially because uh, footsteps are so noisy in this game. Maybe if uh, Hyperscape becomes a lot more campy than it currently is. And you know, we see a lot of strategies of people hiding in buildings with mines. Uh, the reveal could be useful to like let you know that somebody's actually camping in the building. But from what I've played of the game so far, uh, this is definitely not how it's played currently um, so reveal just doesn't seem like as much of a place in uh, in the current state for hype escape all right so that is all of the hacks that are currently in the game right now or oh, one quick thing I forgot to mention as well uh, I said that the heal and the mine are the only ones get the get a bonus at legendary it also includes the slam as well so the slam um, at every rarity I think it does I want to say 30 damage let's double check here didn't actually see the number very good nice one Baggins yeah 30 damage and it's actually it doesn't matter like how high up in the air and how far you come down or how close or how distant there is a radius around you but even if you do just an absolutely tiny jump like this it's still 30 damage uh, regardless you know even though I barely went up into the air um, however if you do get it to legendary to scale up to 45 which is not a bad amount of damage you know that's uh that's like having a level one skybreaker hit them from a like, decent range um, so just to show you guys that I'm not making it up, we'll go and hit this guy, these guys here for 45 instead of 30 now. There we go. And again, it doesn't really matter if you go all the way up into the air or if you just go like a couple feet and then land. Uh, it's still 45 damage. So yeah, another reason why um, Slam is also very good uh, in conjunction with the teleport. So, actually moving on to the weapons now. You've already heard me talk about it, but I do think Skybreaker is currently one of the best weapons for the reasons we stated earlier. But if you're just skipping ahead into the video and you don't know what those reasons are, I'll explain it again. Based on the distance the Skybreaker uh, travels, it does more damage. So if we go and uh, just stand next to this guy here and hit him directly, we've got 23 damage. If I get really, really close to him, 17 damage. However, if we shoot from a good distance away, like these guys at the back here, there we go, 57 damage. And I think that's actually the max we've got. We actually managed to pick up a level two Skybreaker here. At level one, it should only do 50 damage. And I think it's 15 if they're right next to them. Let's uh, go double check that. Yeah, so 15 for the point blank and then 50 at its max range, which I wanna say is probably this range. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. As long as the Skybreaker travels like roughly this distance here, um, and you can get that obviously pretty reliably with the slime, which is why we rated it so highly, or the teleport. And it hits uh, multiple people. You don't actually have to hit them directly as well, just as long as they're in the uh, radius. So even if I just barely scratch the tip of this guy, 
There we go. It's uh, it's very generous with the amount of damage you can do with the Skybreaker. And it sets up really, really nicely with the Teleport and the Slam, because you can just reliably put yourself uh, a decent distance away from the enemy and then shoot them like that, so... Yeah, Skybreaker currently a monstrous weapon, um, especially when you get it to max level. Oh, and this is an interesting thing worth mentioning. Like with the hacks, there are certain weapons that get damage at every rank, whereas other weapons don't. So if we take a look at the uh, Salvo, for example, here, um, upgrading it just upgrades the magazine size for the first uh, three levels. So six is the max now, then seven, then eight, and then we get another magazine size, but we also get damage at the final level on the salvo, whereas the Skybreaker is damaged at every single level. Uh, this is the same with the sniper rifle, and it's also the same with the revolver as well. So the revolver at every single rank does get the uh, damage increase. Here we go. And I guess the reason behind this is because it wouldn't really make sense to have a six shot revolver have seven shots in it or eight shots in it. And the same with the Skybreaker. Um, having the Skybreaker increase its magazine size at every level would just be completely broken. Because uh, one of the downsides of this weapon is it does have a pretty long reload time after every single shot. And the same with the sniper rifle as well. Having a, a larger magazine size in the sniper rifle would just make that weapon completely broken as well. So uh, the trade off is that you do get damage at every single level, um, but on. Obviously, every other weapon, you get magazine size and damage at the max level on those. So, despite that, though, I do truly believe that the Skybreaker and the uh, Sniper Rifle are really, really powerful. If we uh, get them both to max level here... Oh, and a little secret that, uh, that reminded me. Like, this uh, swapping speed, I don't know if they're going to change it anytime soon, but it actually takes quite a while to swap weapons right now. You can see... There we go. And I want to swap back. Got to hold an F for quite a long time. A little strategy you can do is just drop your weapon on the ground and then pick up... Oh, I actually picked up the same thing there, but drop the weapon on the ground and then pick up the other one. This is a much faster way of uh, swapping than uh, holding in the F to do it that way, so... Yeah, um, I've changed my open menu screen from I to Tab. Obviously, uh, it might be something different on the controller, but yeah, rebound it to Tab because it's much easier to do it this way rather than trying to, you know, put my hand all the way over to I on the keyboard. So Tab, and then left click on it, and then pick up the other weapon. Here we go! You know, maybe it takes like a little bit of getting used to, but just going to the training range and getting used to like dropping and swapping. Uh, it's much faster than, as I say, holding in F to do that. But if we go back to what I was talking about, getting a max level sniper rifle here. So the sniper is actually a one shot, and it's one of the only weapons in the game that can one shot uh, when it's maxed out. We get 120 damage on a headshot, which will kill anybody other than somebody using armor or the ball. Um, regardless of how far away they are. The, another interesting thing about the sniper rifle is it's also hit scan as well. So there's no real way to show in the uh, training range because there's no moving targets, but you don't actually have to lead your shots based on how far away the enemy is as long as, you know, they're uh, in your sights, regardless of whether they're, you know, five meters away from you or 500 meters. As long as they're in the sights and you have the crosser over them, it's that 120 damage. Um, even if you don't, you know, you're not a sniping headshot god, um, just landing body shots is still 80 damage, which is, you know, that's a pretty decent chunk of health. That's most other weapons will then finish them off. And the same with the max level Skybrook as well. If you can get a decent distance from the enemy, so again, like, say, even just about this range here. That's still 80 damage as well. So uh, these two weapons really, they don't synergize together well, but they synergize with your teammates really, really well. So just having one of these, you could run both if you're feeling spicy, but just having one of these um, as one of your weapons and then something else that you can switch to to finish them off. So if we Skybreaker them, 80 damage, and then just one revolver shot. Actually, two revolver shots. There we go. <laughs> and then we kill them. <laughs> one, but actually two revolver shots. However, if it is a max level revolver, I think that's a, that's a one-two combo. We'll just double check that, though. Okay, here we go. There we go. So, yeah, the one-two combo that you have with uh, the sniper rifle at max, or the skybreaker at max, plus the revolver, or uh, any other weapon, for example. One of the other weapons that is uh, strong and maybe unexpectedly strong, I did kind of wrote this weapon off initially when I first started playing, but uh, the more I played of uh, Hyperscape, the more I realized this weapon is actually pretty insane, and that is the minigun, so um, the automatic Gatling gun. Here we go! Again, like every other weapon apart from the Holy 3, it just increases in magazine size. But it is a pretty substantial increase in magazine size with every level. And when you get it to max, you get the damage as well as the bonus magazine size, which is 270 uh, ammo. Which is honestly just an insane amount of ammo. Like, it's, it's very hard to run out. I mean, just for example, I'll show you how long... 
There we go. We almost killed uh, all of the dummies here. And that was with some pretty bad aim as well and not even landing headshots. So yeah, this the minigun can be really, really powerful. Honestly, it's just a better version of the Ripper, unfortunately, right now. I find the Ripper to be pretty underwhelming compared to the uh, minigun. It's got pretty low recoil. Um, regardless of how far away the enemy is, it's, you know, it's there's no damage fall off with any of the weapons in the game. So uh, actually, well, the, the bots despawn, so it's going to be hard to show that, for example. But um, yeah, the minigun really, really strong. Especially in conjunction with the uh, Skybreaker or the Sniper Rifle, uh, you know, doing the majority of somebody's health with a, a shot from one of these weapons and then switching to the minigun uh, just to finish them off. Really powerful combo. Um, one of my favorite combos to run right now is just the minigun and the Skybreaker. So you Skybreaker into a team of three and then just spray the minigun across all three of them and get three quick kills uh, without needing to reload. Very powerful combo. And uh, I'm not sure how they're going to deal with this weapon. Maybe they just need to buff some of the others. Because I actually don't think it's too overpowered. It is, But it is just a strictly better version of the Assault Rifle right now, in my opinion. Uh, looking at the Assault Rifle, for those of you who are interested, uh, we can show it off right now on the video. Assault Rifle is very much like what you would expect from an Assault Rifle. So at level 1, we have uh, 24 ammo. The reload time... Reasonably long. Not one of the longest in the game, but still... Takes a little while. Uh, landing headshots, it can't. It does have a pretty good time to kill. Um, and if we upgrade and fuse it, we can get uh, max ammo up to 36, and of course, bonus damage at the fully fused level as well. A fully fused um, assault rifle is a pretty decent weapon. You know, you can laser people pretty hard with this weapon. The recoil is uh, not really noticeable either. Most of the weapons don't really have much of a recoil to deal with. You know, we compare this game to Apex Legends. It's not like a recoil pattern that you really need to learn. Um, I can pretty much just, you know, click heads all day long without too much uh, trouble. Now, of course, that, that's with stationary bots. Targets moving through the air, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but uh, I just think that because of the uh, magazine, the sheer size of the magazine and the fact that there's no difference in recoil or anything, uh, you pretty much take the minigun over the Ripper, but just so you guys get a chance to see what it looks like. Uh, other weapons we haven't looked at yet. Um, I'm not really a big fan of either the Salvo or the Komodo, but I know there are a few little tricks and uh, a few players that do run these pretty effectively. So the Komodo is kind of like a uh, another form of rocket launcher. Uh, very spammable. Doesn't do a tremendous amount of damage. I think it's like only 20 damage or something like that. Yeah, 20 damage. Uh, so it's going to take a while to kill people. You're going to have to reload quite a few times before you actually manage to finish anybody with a level 1 Komodo. And even uh, fully maxed out. I think we're still looking at a pretty long time to kill as well. Yeah, 25 damage at max level. So not really getting that much of a bonus damage. At least you can kill somebody with a full clip now. Uh, where the Komodo does shine is inside of a building because of the knockback. Uh, once you get somebody trapped inside of a building, you can just sort of bounce them off the walls uh, eternally and they can't really do anything about it unless they've got uh, like the ball or, you know, a quick teleport to dash out of there. So Komodo does shine inside of a building. A uh, little secret with it as well. You can rocket jump with the Komodo uh, just by shooting at the ground. It's not really a great amount of movement, but it's, you know, it's something to uh, bear in mind that you can do with it. If you got your timing really, really good, you could possibly, uh, you know, go from one rooftop to another using the uh, double jump system and uh, maybe one of the movement abilities as well. The salvo is pretty similar to the Komodo, except it's more of a grenade launcher, so it trades off uh, being able to instantly explode for having a bounce, but it does more damage as a result of that, so a level 1 salvo. We're looking at 25 damage uh, straight off the bat rather than the 20 like with the Komodo. Um, you can also bounce it off of walls as well and uh, hit yourself with it to kind of rocket jump if you want to. Um, but yeah, pretty useful, I guess, to spam into like the doorway of a building. So if you know there's enemies in there, you can just like fire a bunch of grenades in and uh, confirm some pretty reliable damage. But it does feel pretty underwhelming compared to the Skybreaker and uh, the other weapons that we've already talked about being very, very good. Again, we can increase the magazine size uh, through every level and at max level. We get the damage fusion, which now causes it to do 31 damage as opposed to the 25 we started off with. So not bad if you're going for a bit of a spam strat. If you do like to uh, hold a building or you know there's a team inside of a building, you can just like spam grenades in there and get some uh, pretty decent damage on in them. But I generally just find the uh, both the Komodo and the Salvo to be pretty underwhelming currently. 
Um, I don't really want these weapons to be OP because, uh, you know, I've, I've lived in the noob tube metas in uh, Call of Duty and it's not too fun to play against. But, you know, maybe if you're a, you, you do like your explosives, you could run the uh, Komodo or the Salvo, but probably not together. I think that would be a little bit too much. Then, of course, we have the... Uh, the big king daddy, the skybreaker. We've already talked about this weapon a lot, but it's yeah, it's it's very very good. Finally, the last few weapons uh, we touched a little bit on the uh, riot one. I definitely think out of these three, it's probably one of the best. The shotgun is good, but it is a bit niche. Um, it very much functions like a shotgun as you would expect. Uh, you pick it up, you can increase the magazine size at every level, and then again at max level we get the magazine size and the damage. Point blank, this weapon can do a lot of damage, especially with a headshot. It is, a, it is actually a one-shot, 120, but the likelihood that you're going to be able to get like next to somebody and shoot them in the head is pretty slim. I haven't actually managed to do it yet in uh, the, quite the few hours that I've had playing in uh, Hyperscape. But, you know, with the chest shot, uh, it's still a pretty decent chunk of damage at max level. I do like to uh, run invisibility if I'm going for a shotgun strat where uh, you sort of, you know, you pop your uh, invisibility like this. So, like, you know, uh, maybe teleport around the corner, then invisibility. Uh, you find some enemies inside of a building, and then you just right-click. It breaks you out of invisibility instantly, and you can just uh, get a lot of damage in on the enemies pretty reliably. So shotgun, definitely not a bad weapon. Um, just obviously struggles with the, the range sort of system. It is a weapon to be used up close, whereas you'll find right now the meta is very much a long-range weaponry with the sniper rifle and the skybreaker being some of the best. A lot of the enemies, if they're going to be running slam, and uh, teleport, they're gonna be pretty hard to hit out of the air uh, with just a shotgun. So, uh, one of the reasons why the shotgun, maybe not the best right now, is just because of, you know, how airborne the meta currently is. Looking at the revolver, um, pretty solid weapon, decent uh, fire rate, decent damage out of the bat. Uh, headshots do, uh, I think it kills somebody, let's see, in how many? Yeah, so kill them with four headshots, however, you get to max level because we have damage at every single rank. Kill him with three headshots, 57 apiece, which is not bad. That's like a landing a slam plus on somebody every single time you pull the trigger. Um, headshot's not going to be super easy to pull off with a with a revolver. It is pretty precise in terms of uh, landing your shots. But a nice one to uh, run in conjunction with the sniper or the skybreaker. I have uh, had a lot of fun running a skybreaker revolver or a sniper rifle and uh, revolver. Finally, one of the last uh, weapons we have to look at here is one of the weirdest weapons, and I haven't really used much of it either, but it is the D-Tap. So it's an automatic targeting pistol. So if you put this sort of uh, reticle over them, it acquires a target for you. And then, you know, whilst having, you know, terrible aim, you can still land your shots pretty reliably. But the, uh, the trade-off is that it does barely any damage. And I don't even know if it's actually possible to get headshots with this weapon. Maybe if we uh, aim down sights, I think uh, the bonus of aiming down sights is that it does fire faster. Whereas compared to... Yeah, we definitely get a f faster fire rate. Um, however, even at max level, I don't think this uh, weapon is really one to be running. Unless you truly have just like some of the worst aim <laughs> you've ever seen in a first person shooter. Yeah, we're now doing six per shot instead of five. Yeah, I, I guess they did have to keep this weapon intentionally bad because, uh, you know, it, it has an aimbot built into it. Maybe I could see a strategy where I don't actually know how far away it locks on targets from. Um, how far away can we... Oh, wait, this is going to be, like, the area where we can tell, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you can acquire targets from a reasonable distance. I guess you could maybe, like, hit somebody with a sniper rifle. If we snipe somebody from, like, this distance and then... <laughs> only takes a little bit longer that you know they've probably ran into cover by then or popped armor or something but uh maybe if you're playing against an especially slow moving opponent uh wait let's see if we can actually do this i didn't aim down sights so yeah unfortunately this weapon i just feel like it's a bit of a meme it's a bit underwhelming it's probably going to be a weapon that you'll see used in like challenge videos it's kind of like the the mozambique of uh hype escape right now in my opinion but hey, who knows? Maybe maybe there's a secret strat to this weapon that I just haven't figured out yet. Maybe it is like the most overpowered weapon in the game. But yeah, right now I just don't think the D-Tap is uh, worth even like picking up. You're probably just better off hitting them with the, the bat that you start off with. Honestly, I think I think you'll get, get a faster time to kill this way than you would uh, pulling out this weapon and trying to finish them off. 
So yeah, that is all of the weapons and all of the hacks currently available in Hyperscape and my ratings of them. We also talked about a few little tips and tricks that you can run with the weapons as well. We're probably going to make an updated version of this video once we find out more about Hyperscape. Uh, I've only been playing for like a couple weeks now and at that it's been like three hour sessions that Ubisoft's let us have. So uh, I'm sure as we play more and more of this game and as you guys leave comments down below of secrets that you found in Hyperscape, we can make an updated guide and rating of all of the weapons and hacks currently in this game. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Is there a particular weapon or hack that you guys are excited to use? Are you going to make a new meta with uh, like the D-tap and reveal or something and prove me horribly wrong? Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking in those comments down below. Of course, if you do enjoy these sort of videos, guys, if you like this sort of breakdown, make sure you go ahead and click that like button. It does help a lot. Subscribe for more Baggins and for more Hype Escape, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. This is the future. This is the future.